Valve adjustments on an XR650L must be done on a cold engine. The side panels, seat, and fuel tank must first be removed. Take off the left side cover by turning the quarter turn fasteners. Remove the bolt on the right side cover, then pull outward near the two grommets to uninstall. There are two 12mm bolts holding on the seat. If you have the seat strap, then there is an additional Allen bolt behind each side cover. Pull back on the seat and then up to remove. Remove the left tank shroud by taking off the three 5mm Allen bolts. The right shroud is attached in the same way. Make sure the pet cock is in the off position and remove the hose clamp. To make pulling off the hose easier, rotate first using pliers. Pull the fuel hose off and prepare a paper towel for a few drops of gas. Next, remove the bolt holding the fuel tank on. Set aside the bolt and washer. Then take off the fuel tank breather hose. Lift the back end of the fuel tank up and then pull backwards. You want to avoid putting pressure on the petcock and to accomplish this, set the tank upright and secure it with an object. Remove the timing hole cap with a 6mm Allen. Also, remove the rubber O-ring and install it back onto the cap. Next, remove the crankshaft hole cap with a 10mm Allen. And again, remove the O-ring. Using a 24mm socket, loosen the valve adjusting hole caps. Then completely remove one intake hole cap by hand. This exposes the adjusting screw and lock nut required for valve adjustment. Next, slowly turn the crankshaft counterclockwise using a 17mm socket. As you turn over the motor, look through the timing hole and be aware that the crank will sometimes rotate a bit on its own. The timing hole here shows a mark with a T. The line next to the T indicates top dead center or TDC. The same T mark will be visible at TDC of the exhaust stroke and TDC of the compression stroke. When at TDC of the exhaust stroke, there will be no slack in the rocker arms. We should continue rotating in the counterclockwise direction to align. You want to avoid turning the crankshaft clockwise to match up markings. We're going to turn the crankshaft one full rotation to ensure the piston is at TDC on the compression stroke. As we turn counterclockwise, you'll see a few other markings. Here are two timing dashes, followed by an F, and then the T for valve adjustment. You want to match the line next to the T with the crankcase cover index marks on top and bottom. With the appropriate TDC alignment, all rocker arms should have slack. I recommend using a valve clearance feeler gauge. This one from ProCycle has intake and exhaust in a single tool and measurements are shown in metric and imperial. The intake calls for 0.1 millimeter. Slide the feeler gauge between the adjusting screw and sub rocker arm to measure clearance. You want to feel a slight drag on the metal and this valve clearance is a bit large so we'll need to adjust and decrease the distance. Before loosening the lock nut, remember the original orientation of the flathead slot as this can serve as a starting guide. Since we just measured the valve clearance to be loose at this position, we know the final screw position will fall within a range in the clockwise direction as highlighted in green. The lock nut might require a ratchet to break loose. To tighten the gap, turn the adjusting screw clockwise and then tighten down the lock nut while holding the adjusting screw still. If you adjust the valve clearance too tight, as I did here, then the feeler gauge will no longer fit. Just take note of the flathead slot orientation and adjust accordingly. For the right clearance, the position of the slot will be between these two settings, as highlighted in green. Loosen the lock nut and turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to increase the gap. The right valve clearance was found halfway between the previous two positions. Once you obtain the recommended clearance, torque the lock nut to 25 newton meters or 18 foot pound. Since it is possible that the adjuster screw tightens while torquing the lock nut, make sure to recheck valve clearance. 
You want a slight drag on the feeler gauge. You can see the gauge stutter as it is gently pulled out. Once completed, replace the hole cap and lightly tighten. Before moving on to the exhaust valve, check to make sure the engine is at TDC and that the mark has not moved. Proceed to remove the next hole cap to expose the adjuster. This one should also have some play. Now we'll be using the other end of the feeler gauge to check exhaust valve clearance. This one was slightly loose, so we'll go ahead and turn the adjuster screw clockwise to reduce valve clearance. Make sure to recheck the gap after torquing the lock nut again. Replace the hole cap and lightly tighten. Make sure that the rubber o-rings on both caps are installed and lightly oiled. Torque the timing hole cap to 10 newton meters or 7 foot pound and tighten the crankshaft hole cap to 8 newton meters or 6 foot pound. Push the fuel tank forward onto the rubber mounts then position the back end onto the bolt opening. Install the washer and bolt, then tighten down. Slide on the fuel tank hose and add the hose clamp. Then attach the fuel tank breather hose. Now both tank shrouds can be installed and the seat as well. Just push down and slide forward. Then tighten up the two seat bolts. When installing the left side fairing, it can help to align the cover and install the leftmost fastener first. Then work on the bottom fastener. And finally the last fastener. For the right side panel, push the plastic inserts into the rubber grommets first and then install the bolt. Thank you for watching. Ride safe out there and enjoy those beautiful XRs.